You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. wonder why your relationships tend to always go wrong and why it's so difficult to understand them welcome to you'll do anything for him you'll do anything for her with your host dr maureen hosier author maureen hosier explains how individuals can work to become self-aware and find some answers as to how their relationships may be able to work for them so now please welcome the host of you'll do anything for him or her dr maureen hosier Welcome, everyone, to You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, A New Relationship Perspective, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, also iHeartRadio and Apple iTunes. Welcome back. Well, we were talking last week about learning to, to make well, changing things in your relationship in order to make the relationship work. And and the big topic that we were talking about is that you are learning to become aware of your own emotional reactions when your expectations and your demands are not being met and you are attempting to interrupt and stop those emotional reactions, trying to stop your little kid behaviors when you are not receiving back or when you feel hurt or sad or forgotten, or not recognized, or not valued, you're learning to take responsibility for yourself and handle those moments differently for yourself. And the reason that you would want to be doing that is it changes the environment, really, of your relationship, how you are reactive how you are handling yourself. If you're emotionally a little kid um, or if you're emotionally more mature and being able to talk about your preferences with your partner, those are two very different places. And one is about relating and the other is about demanding. The demanding side of things, that little kid who just wants what they want, and then when your partner just wants what they want, then, then it's going to go nowhere. And I can really guarantee you that your relationship will not last. So uh, remember I talked a week ago about a woman who came in she was enraged with her boyfriend for not following through on his promise to her that he would spend a Saturday with her rather than go to his family and brothers to spend time, which he often does. And then Saturday rolled around and then he had gone to his brothers and family and just walked out the door on Saturday without any uh, indication of having remembered that uh, that that was to be their day together. So she was upset when she came into the office. And she hadn't realized that during that week, 
prior to the Saturday he was to spend time with her that she had gotten so angry at him, which wasn't unusual, that she had said that she wished he would die. Now, he didn't respond. Well, he did respond. He, he made himself known in, during that week about th that comment. But he did not let her know that that would impact then the Saturday date that they had set up, which makes sense. So that comment that he that she wished he would die, you know, goes a long way to really hurting a, a, a love connection. So when she came into therapy that day, she uh, committed to herself that she would try for a week to have no expectations, no demands, and therefore no emotional reactions. This meant all reactions based on anger, sadness, disappointment, hurt, and needs not meant were going to be just filed. She was not going to show evidence of those feelings in her behavior. Now, what she didn't know was I was asking her to unconditionally love. And this is a hard, I think we, most of us want to aspire to that, but I, but it's a hard, it, it's a hard thing to do, especially when we're feeling deprived and deprived of what we want. So that's what's happening in that moment is that moment is so filled, that in it moment is so filled with deprivation. And deprivation, if it's a, a familiar place from the past, then we now as adults feel we can express those feelings. Unfortunately, they come out as emotionally immature behavior. They come out as anger, rage, crying, hurt, disappointment, sadness, shutting down, walking out the door, slamming a hand through the wall, maybe physical abuse. But all the emotional reactions in that moment are going to push your partner away from you, period. It's up to you that if you want a relationship, you want to be able to work things out together, that the two of you learn how to do that. And that would be about your emotionally growing up and handling those moments between you in a very different way. So, I mean, we're not asking a lot here, just asking that you become self-aware about your own behaviors that are pushing your partner away from you. And you're just standing there screaming, screaming that you want your partner to come close. There's no way anybody's going to come close when you are uh, angry and upset and bickering and needing to be right and accusing your partner. So there's a, you have a lot to learn in there about holding yourself emotionally so that the two of you can begin to talk about things. So my client, committed that day to herself in therapy that she would try for a week, as I said before, to have no expectations, no demands, and no emotional reactions. She came back the next week to let me know her progress. She said that week had changed for her with him. And we will talk about that change when we come back after the commercial break. This is You'll Do Anything for Him. You'll do anything for her 
a new relationship perspective. And it really is a new relationship perspective. Coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple IT- iTunes. See you soon. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. This is You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, a new relationship perspective. Coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. While she made that change over the week, my client decided to listen, decided to try something new. And she was pleasantly surprised. She was shocked, really, more than pleasantly surprised. She was shocked that he came closer to her. He was more affectionate. And I believe, as I said last week, he had brought her flowers one day, just out of the blue. She was, she couldn't believe it because she had believed that he didn't love her, and that's why she was angry. Now, I want to take a moment here that uh, you can call in at any time, ask a question, and, uh, and I will help relate it to, you know, what I've been talking about. Most people, when they would call in, probably would have some sort of difficulty between the two of you, which would mean that you're in it and you know about that moment, which can be very brutal and and devastating. And so please call in. See, Let's see if I can help. Also want to tell you about my website. It's Maureen E. Hosier. PhD.com. I don't think you have to write all that when you write in Maureen, M A U R E E N E. I believe my website will come up. Also, I have the two books on Amazon. You'll do anything for him, you'll do anything for her. And if you have questions, I'm going to make you an offer here. Um, you can, my email address is Maureen, M A U R R R E E E N, at yahoo.com. And uh, I have made the offer on my, e- uh, on my website, Maureen E. Hosier, PhD.com, that if uh, you would like to make a phone call into the show, 
here at uh, 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 11 o'clock Pacific Time, that I will send you a free Kindle uh, book of your choice. You'll do anything for him. You'll do anything for her. So also with that, with my email address, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So send me an uh, an email. M-A-U-R-R-R-E-E-E-N at yahoo.com and ask your question if you're a little hesitant about calling in on the phone. So back to my client. My client was afraid, however. As I said, she, she couldn't believe that he was so affectionate with her. And She had really and truly believed that he didn't love her, but she didn't realize that it was her behavior, her reactions to to tiny moments, to little moments uh, that, that pushed her away from him. And those little moments seemed to her that he was pushing her away from him. And... So this the the moment that we're talking about here is really a very familiar moment and it was a very familiar moment for my client because this is how she felt treated by her mother her mother was very critical very demanding, very pushy, uh, and very controlling of her child, my client. Her mother tried to get what she needed emotionally, you know, also needed there in the house, um, and, and she tried to have her child take care of her emotional feelings. Now, her mom was doing this without her awareness. She, of course, too, had a mom or a dad that was very controlling. And this is somewhat of a normal situation because our parents and their parents and then their parents, our great-grandparents, grew up with power and submissiveness. So we have learned the one person relationship way of life, that somebody is in charge and the rest of us have to be submissive. That worked for a while, a long while, but it's not working now for us. People are wanting equal participation in their relationships. But when we, if we don't know that when we go into relationships that this is going to come up for us, our childhoods, our, our, any trauma in our childhoods is going to be between the two partners. Because we pick someone who has had developmental trauma in their childhood, and it matches. So both partners have had developmental trauma. Probably both partners, as children, were controlled by demanding parents with expectations and need to have children be who they wanted their children to be. Children become the children of those parents. So now the two partners get together and both of them probably have had control, been controlled, have issues with being controlled from the past. And that, those moments are going to come up in the relationship. It's practically guaranteed because we are left in that emotional position, that level of emotional maturity by our parents. 
Our parents, in our everyday relating with them, we experience over and over and over and over and over and over again the demands and expectations of our parents. So we learn them, and we learn them well. We need to break. This is, you'll do anything for him. You'll do anything for her, a new relationship perspective. Live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. Come back to learning more about how to change. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Welcome back. This is You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, A New Relationship Perspective. Live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I think I forgot to give you the number the last time to call in, which is 866-451-1451. Again, my email address, if you have questions, you can either call in to that number or M, you can write in on my email, M-A-U-R-R-R-E-E-E-N at yahoo.com with any questions. I'd be happy to answer those questions. So I've been explaining a bit about why this stuff comes up between us in our relationships. Most of us are having difficulty with feeling that we have to give up ourself in a relationship to make it work. As adults, we feel that the person who loves us should want to listen to us, care about us, meet our needs. I can't tell you how many people believe that their partner should meet their needs. The word should for me is always suspect. Anybody that should do something. No, there are. That's a rule. And rules come from outside of ourselves. Rules were given to us by our parents. And we didn't like the rules. So when we get into a relationship, our partners don't like the rules either. And we don't like their rules. So a relationship is about not having rules. And, and about not having to relate out of fear. 
which means that the relationship will be done if I don't do the relationship right. That's kind of how I felt with my mom, was that if I didn't do the relationship right with her, then she would turn away from me. Now, I was, you know, two, three, four. I was little when all this whole stuff started. And I was terribly afraid that my mother would turn away from me. And that makes for a very anxious attachment. So I learned very quickly to how my mother needed me to relate to her. <laughs> the problem was with me, I was also sort of a rebellion. So I tried to, I, I had a mouth on me and, you know, talk back. And that didn't work either. So this is what I'm calling emotional trauma. And emotional trauma can range from minor corrections uh, to, you know, very serious attacks on, on children. And we're all left with losses in our relationship with our parents. Many of us wish that our, our relationships could have been different. And again, I'm going to say there's no blame or judgment. Our parents didn't know either because they were trained and conditioned by their parents who needed their power and control. And for a lot of good reasons. You know, everybody's trying to make a living, trying to uh, get it right, trying to survive. So this is relationships are very complicated. Growing up is very complicated. And it's why we can't have any blame or judgment. I did say last year last time though last week that those parents that are beating their children um, emotionally, just emotionally out of control, are alcoholic, are um, neglectful. Yes. They are reacting to their childhood issues, but there's enough information out there now to, for them to know that they're, they're not handling things well, at least. Um, so I don't know if we can continue to give parents who are so controlling and demanding and physically controlling and demanding a pass um, because it, it is at least illegal, and it certainly is emotionally harmful. So we're back to my client. She's had a good week. He surprised her. He went with her to her, uh, see her family on Saturday, what she had asked for the week before. But she was afraid because she felt that she was giving up herself in order to make the relationship work. And she knew that that wasn't going to last. And that's why a week is really, I mean, a week is not really enough time for, for anyone to get that they're, I'm, I, want, I want to provide it in a week segment just to be able to see what the difference in how you handle things changes the relationship, not how he changed. Now, both of them did come into therapy then, and they did both talk about what was happening, and their conversation was fairly easy and respectful. And they both were listening. And they both found some of their situations fairly humorous and funny. And, and there's, you know, the past situations that they've had. And they were laughing about, you know, what has happened. All that just means that they're starting to get, they're starting to learn that their behaviors impact the relationship and their positive behaviors 
impact the relationship positively and their negative behaviors impact the relationship negatively. This is You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, A New Relationship Perspective. Live from the BBM Global Network, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, and Apple iTunes. See you soon. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Leip's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Welcome back. This is You'll Do Anything for Him. You'll Do Anything for Her. A New Relationship Perspective, live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. My client. Back to my client. I think I went off on a tangent there a bit. Not, but a good tangent. Um, She was feeling that she was going to explode at any time because she was afraid of being resentful and angry as she was not reacting to things that he was doing. But she had real evidence that he came closer to her. So what is happening for this for her in this at this place of her need to react negatively? to things that are happening in the relationship is that she is in a moment to moment. She is a moment to moment feeling person. What she is experiencing in the moment determines how she feels. So what is happening to her from the outside of herself determines her mood, her reactions, her internal feelings about herself. Her internal world, her internal well self then is kind of rocky and unpredictable because it's based on what's happening from the outside. She is upset when things don't go her way. So, yeah, that sort of reminded me right there, too, is I can remember one of the very first times when I wanted something. I was in graduate school. And I wanted, I just wanted a room to hold uh, enough people that I could do, uh, I don't know, it was a seminar or training or something like that. And I asked for a room big enough where I was going to school. And the two guys at the top said, no, couldn't do it. And I, and I thought then, oh my gosh, I'm in a position of not being able to get what I want. And I was infuriated. But the, I had to deal with it. That, that that was the answer. There was no help. And, and these guys at the top had a history of not really caring about, you know, what their students were needing. So in a relationship, we feel the right to want what we want. She is upset her 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 being depends upon how the outside is treating her that's not going to work for us it's not going to work for her so there has to be a way to emotionally grow up so that we are not so impacted 
by what is happening on the outside of us, where we're just emotionally reacting. You can see emotionally reacting. You hear it on the news every day. You hear it in every news broadcast. You, we, people are emotionally reacting. They are very young emotionally. Many people are very young emotionally and feel the right to emotionally demand then what they want without consideration of all the others around us. So I'm including myself as well. This is, this is a process of emotionally growing up. I mean, we're not the only, I'm not the only person on this planet. And so, and each of us are not the only person on this planet. So how do we not be so impacted about those not so emotional. I, I, we need to be impacted. We still need to be impacted, but we, the it's the, our emotional reactions that are not helpful. So how do we grow up, have something happen to us? that doesn't shake us so that it doesn't shake us to the core, our emotional core. And we're just screaming about it's not right. It's not right. And we're just reacting. And some of us are, you know, getting a gun and making a huge statement with guns. This is what happens to our emotional selves. If we are emotionally reacting through our, and that is through our behaviors out in the world, making statements without words. We're going to have a hard time as a species going forward. You might think, oh, well, no, not really. No, yes. We have got to learn to have relationships at least most of us. So we also have a relationship with our planet. I can't imagine. I think about all the plastic that's out there in our ocean waters, choking the ocean. And our emotional reactions are impacting our ability to get along. So I'm going back to my client again. She's had one week of beginning to understand here that she, her relationship changes when she is not emotionally reactive. So there are some next steps because we really want her mind to be able to hold herself emotionally in a fairly consistently happy place, no matter the situations, the awful moments she is involved in. If she's able to evaluate then what has happened to her, again, evaluate. I'd like to talk more about evaluation after the break. This is You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, A New Relationship Perspective, live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. See you soon. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, Every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse, 
called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Welcome. This is You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, a new relationship perspective, live, live, live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. You know, I'm, I'm going to go forward here. I think maybe I'm getting a little sidetracked, but I was listening to the commercial that we just heard, and She talked about the emotional, physical, sexual abuse that is occurring. And the people that are acting out these reactions, at least in atrocities, have been very, very injured emotionally when they're young probably unrecognized, not valued, not enjoyed, not understood, not cared about. Maybe parents not even caring whether they exist or not. And people are stuck in their emotional reactions. And their emotional reactions can be very devastating, certainly devastating to a relationship, certainly devastating to the uh, relationships which they have in family and friends, and, and even more so acting out their pain, their emotional pain, and put it on others, take it out on others. And that seems to be happening a lot. It's a sad, sad situation. And somehow we need to figure out that we need to have things don't work from power. They just don't. Um, Children that are raised by power are going to either be submissive or they're going to be on top. And we will have to deal with that as time goes on on a larger scale with the numbers of people that we have. So getting back again, sorry, I digress a bit, but getting back to my client, her boyfriend too was less reactive, less emotionally reactive. He tended to just walk out on her because he didn't want to have to deal with her emotional reactions. And so they so they're in my office and as I said laughing about what's going on and and really looking forward. She had been shocked that he still loved her. She thought he didn't. So these relationships that we're having when there are emotional reactions are getting very confused. And I'd say that a lot of people, when they uh, split up, it's they split up, not because they're out of love. It's because they're 
in so much emotional pain that they're devastated for months, maybe years after the relationship is over. Somehow in your relationship, this is where you can start turning things around for yourself is taking responsibility for your own emotional reactions and even learning from your emotional reactions. If you have an emotional reaction, then you might be, you could wonder, remember to wonder, well, why am I feeling like that? I mean, that happened to me yesterday. I was sitting with friends and all of a sudden I felt myself just shutting down. And I was, I don't know, I began to disappear. And I couldn't and I didn't remember to interrupt my own emotional reaction by a question. And the question to myself would have been, well, why am I feeling this way? Why do I feel cut off? Why do I feel not comfortable? And then not not answering that question out of my head, but answering it from out of my body, out of my heart, and coming up with the reason why, as I was sitting there, I began to disappear. Was I doing something that I didn't want to do and had just shut down? like I certainly had done a lot as a kid with my mother who was controlling the situation and needed me to be there. Did I kind of feel like that? What was going on for me? And I didn't catch myself until later and after everything was over. And then I thought, Hmm, I forgot to try to figure out what was going while it was happening. So I could either get myself back No, so I could get myself back and I could then either say, you know, you guys, thanks, I've had fun, I need to go, da-da-da, take care of myself that way or or get back involved into the, what was happening at the time. And this is how my client is going to begin to find out what's going on for herself, is when she's feeling feelings, emotional reactions to something that has happened between she and her boyfriend. Instead of continuing to make him be the problem, that she backs up, kind of contains her emotional self and remembers to ask herself, well, why am I so angry with him? Why am I so angry? What's going on for me? Now, I'm going to tell you right here in that moment, you have an answer for that. Our bodies have the answer for every question we want to ask ourselves. Our thoughts have to be taken off of it. Those thoughts in our head, those automatic, well, he, uh, da, 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 or I, da, da. No, this is a thoughtful question that you're asking yourself as so that when the answer comes to you, it's going to come, it's going to come up to you and you will help yourself know what's going on for you. This is, you'll do anything for him. You'll do anything for her. A new relationship perspective live from the BBM global network. Tune in radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. We'll be back in a moment. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness. For those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care, or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. 
The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a passionate book that tells the true story of author Rhonda Knudsen's journey through the darkness and adversity of abuse. The book takes readers on an emotional trail from the depths of despair to the heights of forgiveness and understanding. She was inspired to help others, and her book is a vital tool through this process. Faithful to God and devotional to her beacon of hope, Rhonda Knudsen is a perfect example of finding a guiding light that helped her come through the dark and into the light. Her book can assist you in overcoming your challenges with abuse. The publication of Escape from Hell, A Woman's Story is a triumphant achievement and it can help you take ownership of your own experience of abuse and come through stronger than before. Rhonda is currently working on two more books, Shadows of Corruption and Coast to Coast on a Piece of Toast. To read more about this inspiring author and purchase her books, visit RhondaKnutson.com or go to www.amazon.com. Welcome back. This is You'll Do Anything for Him. You'll Do Anything for Her, a new relationship perspective. Coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. Well, I'm not sure where I want to end up today. I do know that our relationships must change. If you love the person that you with, you are with, and you want to be with them, then it is your job to change your own emotional reactions. Well, stop your own emotional reactions, stop your own demands, and stop your expectations. As I had said last week, we really have no right to change or make someone change so that they take care of our feelings and needs. This relationships are not about a parent-child relationship where someone is in charge and the other is submissive and takes care of the one on top. That doesn't work. It's never going to work, and it won't be. It, it won't be comfortable, and there'll be so much emotional pain. So, and this is a process that goes on with your relationship, your work relationship, your family relationships, because we are we are impact, but impacted by other people and what they think and feel and what they want. And rather than be at the whim of everything that's coming from the outside of us, and right now there's so much coming from the outside of us that's frightening, that's disgusting, that's um, terrible to think about, to work with, we have to be able to contain our own emotional reactions so that we can evaluate how we want to handle what we want to say or do or how we want to take care of those moments with our partners. As I said, the relationships between the two of you are really the start of everything that maybe can grow and build so that we learn how to be with people, all people. There are so many different beliefs in this world to have someone expect that everybody believe like they do is impossible. It's not going to happen. And we don't have to have a war in order to um, 
make the others do what we want them to do. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. What work can work are relationships. And the biggest relationship that we will have and need to have is the one with our partner and families and our planet. We have to have relationships in order to make things work. And in a lot of things, we're running out of time. Just our emotional reactions are not going to solve anything. They're not going to make anybody change. They're not going to make anybody do anything. So it's us. It's me. I, If I need things to change in my relationship, I'm the one that, that must begin to change. Take responsibility and be accountable for my own ways of handling things. Am I respectful? Am I kind? Am I gentle? Am I understanding? Am I wanting to? to work with people with different ideas? Am I valuing myself and valuing my partner at the same moment in time? Am I valuing myself and my partner at the same moment in time, accepting, accepting my partner for who they are? This is You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, a new relationship perspective, live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Apple iTunes. I'll see you next week. This has been You'll Do Anything for Him, You'll Do Anything for Her, with your host, Dr. Maureen Hosier. Listen each week as Maureen explores a path to understanding your relationships in an effort to make them work best for you. Here on You'll Do Anything for Him or Her with your host, Dr. Maureen Hosier. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.